I was born in Los Angeles, California, and grew up in Hollywood. Circuses used to come in and uh, set up their tent, and I'd go to the circus. And I used to go to the beach and the pier and fish. And, and you could do that all by yourself. I was just a little kid. It was really quite a wonderful experience. My father was a painter who um, painted portraits mostly and then evolved into painting abstract later on. But I grew up with him and watching him work in his studio and learning a, a lot about painting. He studied with, with Fernand Leger in Paris. And so the Cubism did over, overlap into his work. The Cubism is probably why I, I really like sculpture. It's because it's, uh, it influenced me in that, that way. My mother was a musician. She played the harp and the piano. So we always had her music going on in the house and my father doing his painting in the studio. So there was always something going on there. My mother was an incredible, incredible person. I think I told you about her going to Vietnam. And she uh, went over there as a, a volunteer during the war and uh, ran a Vietnamese orphanage. And when she came back, she had lost a great deal of weight, so she was very svelte. And she had a gold suit that she wore to go to my opening at the Whitney Museum. And while there, there was a woman's strike because the women were not fairly represented in the exhibition. So they proceeded to sit down in the galleries and uh, protest. Well, my mother went around and personally picked each one up to break the strike. She says, you're not going to ruin my son's opening at the Whitney. <laughs> Which I, <laughs> this was in 1970, so it was something one doesn't forget. <laughs> but this was the nature of my mother. My two sons are sculptors. They're both in their 40s. And my daughter's in her 30s, has studied uh, filmmaking at School of Visual Arts, and is now working in animation in Hollywood. When they were teenagers, they decided they wanted to make money, and I said, you can make money if you come and work with me. So they came in and lived here with me during the summers or when they weren't in school. Because of their working with me in my studio here in New York, they became sculptors. I liked what I saw at David Smith and uh, Picasso and Gonzales. The teacher that I had at Michigan was a welder, and his name was McClure, and he really taught me a little about welding. I would go to junkyards all over Detroit and uh, pick up scraps and uh, bring them back to the studio and uh, weld them up at that time. So for about six years, I exclusively uh, welded steel. And then um, I decided I ought to try aluminum because steel rusted too much. So I got into aluminum. Uh, I started making models and from a model, which would usually be made in wax and then cast in bronze, uh, then I would make templates from the model in bronze to some size that I determined to be done in, in aluminum. I was teaching at City College uh, sculpture classes, and uh, that was three nights a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And that was, then after I was done teaching, I'd run down to Max's Kansas City Bar. This is where all the artists collected in those days. This was during the 70s. When you're sitting there drinking and you're not talking or you're not negotiating or trying to be a star, you tend to play around with the sticks and the, and the straws that are in the drinks you're drinking. And so I started uh, making uh, shapes out of those bamboo sticks. And so I took them home and then I started putting wax around them and then I started making them larger in wax. And then I made a series of sculptures that were called arch pieces in aluminum. 
And these were based on the swizzle stick. And then you, you just evolve your pieces. One thing leads to another. I now decide to make my own junk piles in wax and then take those shapes that I had done in wax and assemble those into the cast bronze pieces. The nice thing about working in wax is that you still get a little chance to do some modeling, which you don't get in uh, working directly in metal. When I sketch in the wax, I'm, I'm doodling the shapes, you know, using an automatic action kind of movement to create the curves and the straight lines and the shapes. And I do the same with the uh, paintings. I have a red that I want to put on here. But I think the, the, ma the main influence was uh, in the painters. I mean, I looked at paintings more than I looked at anything else. Uh, Gorky is probably the, my favorite painter and my favorite influence. And de Kooning is a very significant artist in my life. I'm building up a lot of these brush strokes with color and shape and size and trying to create a kind of thing that's going this way, but yet it's all two-dimensional. When you're a sculptor, you tend to want to show the three-dimensionality of the shape and the form. So believe it or not, I do know kind of where I want to go with this. It's just getting there that takes a while. I like everything to be within its own scope of uh, evolution. And you always, you always have to trust yourself. You learn to trust. And trusting is the most difficult process with the people as well as with your own work. I walk on the street and I see different shapes moving and congregating and separating themselves. And that is always something I'm always looking at. I like to listen to classical music. And I find that, that kind of idea, that intellectual uh, feeling and thinking about what these notes are doing uh, influences in my work. And for a while I did a lot of sculptures that were tangos and swing dances and uh, jitterbug. It's, it's not conscious, it's really subconscious. Now there's an example of what just happened. When I was pulling it out of the rubber, this, this curved. I like it, right? So I'll keep it. That's, you know, like, that's like an accident that just happened, and it's, a, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful accident. Now when it's soft like this, I can, you know, I can give this dimension, this quality like that. And then if I don't want it to be too flat, I'll move this, move this over a little bit. I don't seem to repeat the same shape. I repeat similar shapes, but I never seem to get the same shape. And I find that kind of interesting. And then it's interesting that I, every year, um, I usually do a series of 12 to 20 sculptures in bronze, uh, small bronze maquettes, I mean. And I never do the same thing. They're always evolving. So it's just like your personality. It's, your personality is always changing. Shadoni got this commission for me in, to do my first bronze. And it was because of Shadoni that I did that. And about four years later, I got a phone call from Shadoni, from this woman who said, I like your work. I wonder if you'd like to show some of your work here. It ended up that uh, this was Deborah who then became my wife after a few negotiations. <laughs> and so Shadoni has been a very influential and meaningful part of my life. A fabricated bronze is the uh, putting together of uh, bronze sheets, usually eighth inch thick, and they are cut out shapes, like a 
a jigsaw puzzle, and then they are put together by welding these these sides together into a solid shape, and then the solid shapes are then put together into a total sculpture. I met Ryan at Shadoni, and uh, we did the first commission together in bronze. It was his first fabricated bronze also when he was working at Shadoni. After a few years, he moved on to start his own company, and now we work together on doing large outdoor bronze pieces. Now, instead of spraying, you can just, uh, you can put this on with a brush. You can paint it on, or you can stipple it on. See, you got the copper all back again, even with this green. Living with my sculpture uh, is always a, a taxing problem, because I always want to change it. And every time I look at my work, I want to take it apart and put it back together another way. And it's very hard not to, so I'll move furniture instead. <laughs> but I think, I feel very honored that, uh, and humbled by people who like to buy and live with my work. So I walk into somebody, a stranger's house, and there's my work, and they, they, they really have a feeling for it and they really talk about how they enjoy looking at this work. And it means so much to them, and, that, and consequently it means a lot to me. I'm always looking for that pleasing conclusion. I never, never totally reach it, but I'm always striving for it. So every, that, that's why an artist keeps going. He's always striving for that next relationship that's going to work.